So, hello everyone. Um, I am Nadine and today we're going to have a very special workshop. So, I hope you're all doing well. And yeah, let's get started. So, now, uh, in these days, we know in the COVID days, most of the people, uh, most of the governments and worldwide and even specifically here in UAE, they are mandating people to wear masks. And that's just like to try to reduce the COVID cases and to cope with the situation of the COVID. So basically, the thing for the face detect for the face mask detection have been used now widely um, worldwide and even here in UAE in many places like malls, offices, and things like that because it's really important to catch the people who's violating the rules. So today we will learn to do our own uh, face mask detection. And yeah, let's get started. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed the workshop and learn. So, okay, so to start with, before doing anything, I just want to tell you more about the assembly. So the assembly is a smart lab and it's based in N5 since December 2014. We have done since then over 253 workshops. And the workshops mainly fall under three different categories. The first one is the hack, and this includes anything related to hardware, uh, maybe embedded systems, and the IoT. Uh, and there is the other category, which is the code, and this includes the things that is related to software, APIs, frameworks, and applications uh, using different languages. We also have the data science, uh, which is a more advanced topic, and of course, it's more self-explanatory. Like the data science is things that are related to the AI and the machine learning. And of course, this workshop falls under this category. So our targeted audience are mainly students, professionals, and entrepreneurs. But of course, if anyone else is interested in our workshops, we are welcoming everyone to attend. So we focus on doing smart technologies and practical applications. Um, and this is, of course, shown in our workshop today. And yeah, you can uh, know more about us through our forum. Uh, it's members.theassembly.ae. And also you can tag us on our social media accounts. We have Facebook account, we have Twitter account, Instagram, and YouTube. And you could subscribe on this channel for other upcoming workshops and even know more about us. So yeah, let's start now by about a small overview about the workshop. So in this workshop, we will first talk about an introduction to the deep learning. We will say a small introduction about TensorFlow, and then we will start building the face mask detection model. So basically, what is deep learning? A lot of people are so confused and they like, we hear a lot of buzzwords and we don't specifically know what exactly this means and where this belongs. So we have the artificial intelligence, the machine learning, and the deep learning, those three big buzzwords. And yeah, today I'm gonna tell you exactly. So the artificial intelligence is like the big circle that contains everything else. And basically this means like any technical thing that uh, enables the computer to mimic the human behavior. And yeah, that's the artificial intelligence. The machine learning is basically a subset of the AI. And this includes not just mimicking the human behavior, but also using statistical methods to enable the machine to improve its performance. Uh, based on like an experience or something. So the deep learning thing, it's like the smaller thing that is inside the machine learning, a subset. And it makes the compu uh, it makes the computational, not just by like one layer or something, it has multiple layers that contains of neurons, each layer contains of different neurons, which makes the prediction and uh, the, the, the learning process uh, much efficient. So, we have different deep learning architectures that are used in several different applications. Um, I'll just go through the most commonly used two because like there are I mean, literally a lot of things. So you can just like go through the, the, the most commonly used things. So we have the first one is the recurrent neural network. So in general, any neural network it contains of several layers. We have the input layer, we have the hidden layers, and we have the output layer. So the input layer is just one, <laughs> the output layer is just one, but the hidden layers, they are like several layers there. And it just differs according to the depth of the model and like what do we exactly want to, to predict. So in the recurrent neural network, uh, the best thing about it is that it could maintain a memory of the past inputs. Like if the neuron, as you can see here, could just put the, um, could put like give its output to the layer, to its next layer, uh, that's like usually what the neural networks could do. But this one is different because the neuron, like the one in the next layer, could actually give back uh, the data to the previous neuron or the previous layer. 
So, and it's called recurring for that reason. You can see like the, the error over there. And so, yeah, this is, this is a, an advantage because you can maintain a memory of the past inputs and not, like, not only model the end time thing, but you could also maintain a memory. And this is commonly used mainly in speech recognition and hand recognition, the RNNs. We have another architecture, which is the CNN. And basically, the CNN has several layers as well. Uh, it has also the input and the output and the hidden. But the hidden layers are more specific, like they are divided into two parts. We have the feature learning and we have the classification. So the feature learning is just like extracting the ideas or extracting the features from each image. And then the classification classifies it into the classes that we are identifying. And the CNN is mostly used in image recognition, video analysis, and natural language processing. And of course, you can guess which one we'll be using. We'll be using the CNNs since we will be taking images and yeah, analyzing the images. So yeah, that's basically it for the deep learning. So for doing our program, we will use a library which is called the TensorFlow. And the TensorFlow is a very famous library that is used nowadays in the machine learning applications or the deep learning. It's a free open source library. It's developed by Google. It has symbolic math library as well. It is, you can use it actually to train different models like the CNNs, the RNNs, and other models that are RBNs and VBNs. So yeah, that's, that's a good advantage. Like you have various models there. And also it is released under the Apache 2.0 license. So why do we use TensorFlow specifically? It's because you can use different languages to actually develop on it. You can use Python, you can use C++, Java language, and Rust and Go. And also it supports CUDA. So easy, it's also like an easy model building thing. You can, mod, you, you can build your model easily using TensorFlow. And it supports like various libraries that includes RAG Tensor, uh, TensorFlow Probability, and Tensor to Tensor and Perl. So yeah, that's basically it for TensorFlow. We can now actually start building our uh, face mask detection model. But before that, I just want to like walk you through the steps then we will start implementing the code. So before doing anything, we first have to set, we have the setup phase in which we have to upload, do the import statements, upload the data set to our model or to our IDE, and then uh, adjusting the images, adjusting the size of the image and everything. And then we have the, the building phase, the CNN model building phase, and this phase we like write the actual code for the model, like specify the layers with their parameters and everything. Then we have the training phase, and this is where we pass the images that we actually prepared in the first phase and feed it into the machine that we built in the second phase. And then we will be plotting the results, like the accuracy and the losses of the training model, then we will be testing the model at the end. And before doing anything, you can just go and download the data set, and even you can find the code in the description below, and yeah. So yeah, let's start building our face mask detection model. So basically for this, I will be using uh, Google Collab. It's a very nice uh, IDE and actually it's, it's good because uh, it has its own GPU. You don't need to have a GPU on your laptop. So you just write Google Collab and I think the link is there also provided in the description and you just click a new notebook. You will have a new notebook open. And yeah, as I told you, it's a very nice one because it has its own GPU. You don't have to buy a GPU for your laptop. You can just click here. You can here change the name, maybe workshop one or something. And then yeah, let's start. So you could also add text and you could add code and add everything. So maybe you could add just the text at the beginning of each one. So yeah, this part is the setup. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to do like the import statements for all the libraries that we will be using. So first we need to import TensorFlow, of course, and then as TF, and then we will be importing Keras, and Keras is basically uh, one of the libraries of TensorFlow. We could not put this import here, but I prefer honestly to be in the safe side. So we just add it. And yeah, we will import this. 
We also need to import the libraries that has the models and like the layers and everything. So from TensorFlow, import from TensorFlow.chaos. Uh, dot we have the models first, we need to import the models. We need to import a specific model. We will be using the sequential model and I will be explaining in a minute what is exactly this sequential model. And from TensorFlow as well, I'll just copy paste this. this is and yeah, uh, we will be using from the layers, we will be importing specific layers that we will be actually using. We will be using the conv notion layer, which is called conv2d. And then we will be using the, we also need to use the activation. We need to use the, what else? We need to use the dense, we need to use the flatten. All of this will be explaining in a minute. And we need to use the batch normalizer. And yeah, that's that's basically we need also to use the max folding, yeah. To do. Yeah. That's basically it for the layers. Uh, also from the same library from Keras, we need to import the optimizer. And from the optimizers we will import Adam. There are several optimizers, but I will just go with Adam. And yeah, it proved like it's a very good one. Uh, also, we will have from TensorFlow as well. Curious. Here we don't want from Curious. We want. Just make that overflow here. Dot Curious. And now here we will import from the pre-processing. And from the pre-processing, um, we will just be doing uh, the image pre-processing. So that's why we need to we need to import the pre-processing. So just import an image for the image. And from the pre-processing of the image specifically, we will need the image generator. We will need image. This one to be capital image generator of. So yeah, image data generator. So yeah, that's that's basically the libraries we will need. Uh, we might need for the plotting also. We will need matplot library here. It's by plot. We might need the by plot specifically as plot. And then the last thing we will need the file. We will just need to import the library for. And yeah, so we could like upload the files. So basically, that's the import statements. We will then move to uploading our data set. So we could just like, we have other, like many options. We could just like go here in the browse and maybe upload it directly from our laptop or like have it on like from here. You just click here and then you upload the images or you could even uh, just upload it from a drive. But I have a better way we could do it. We could just like upload it through the program. So we'll have a variable called upload. And then in this variable, we'll have the files dot upload. This is a function which will shows you the uh, like the thing for for the upload. So let's run this one. Hopefully it just works. I think yeah, there are some errors in the syntax. And I'll just remove the P. It's just the worst thing ever. Okay, 
Das ist just a, what new copy paste this statement from <laughs> the code that I already done before, from code statements. Yeah, it's better because of the spelling points. Yeah, it's just exactly the same. I think it's just like some spelling mistakes. So let's look at that. Yeah, we have it now. Then here, the file upload, you just like upload the file. As you can see, you just could choose your file to upload. So I will not do that here because like uploading the file and unzipping it and everything will take a lot of time. So we will just like skip this part. I have it here because, you know, it takes a lot of time to unzip it and it's 100% done. So I can show it to you here. So after zipping the file, sorry, after uploading the file, we just need to like unzip it. So we will use this command unzip. And then we will write the file name, and then that's it. And afterwards, we could remove, just remove the file because like we just unzipped it, and yeah, we have this one. So yeah, basically the unzipped data. Uh, so yeah, basically my file, the data set that I have prepared, it has two files. It has the with mask and the without mask file. So it it just like when you automatically take it, the computer when it finds two files, uh, it will split it into, it will give each class a label. And in our case, since I uploaded like the width before and the without after, so the width will be zero and the without must would be one. And yeah, that's basically it. And before that, now we have all the data supposedly uploaded and unzipped and then the file is removed. And here it is the unzipping part. You can see it's like too long because I have 10,000 images. <laughs> so yeah, that's why it's gonna take so much time. So I just prepared it before the version. Okay, so afterwards, after we have our data, we need to set something called the batch size and something called the epochs. So what's the batch size and what's the epoch? The batch size mainly, when we are getting your, our, dat, our data from the user, we are not like taking the whole images and just feeding it directly like in one time inside the machine. We need to like divide it into different batches. So that's basically the batch size. And uh, the batch size should be a number uh, of powers of two, like maybe two, four, eight, sixteen, something like that. And yeah, it, it depends actually on your image. You don't have to put it too much batch size, but still not that small. You have to adjust something in the middle. So I would choose for mine A. And also, our machine don't learn from like the first time the data are passed to it. it. The data has to actually go through it several times, according to like several cycles. And so it could learn more, like each cycle it will learn more and adjust its weights and everything. So that's basically the epoch. Like we choose what is the epoch we want. So I'll just call it epoch and my epoch would be 30. How you could choose your epoch, you just, this is actually might be a trial and error. Most of the time it's 25, 30. But yeah, you see like you put any number at the beginning, maybe 20 or 25, and then you try your model, see how it reaches, see your accuracy of the training data and the accuracy of the validation data. And then if the accuracy of the training is still increasing, you would increase the epoch, but make sure that the validation as well is still increasing. If the validation is decreasing, so then there's a problem. <laughs> you need to like find a way in the middle that both of them will be increasing and not one of them decreasing. Okay. So we now adjusted the app box. So you heard me in a minute saying like training data and like uh, training data and validation. So what's that? So for our model to learn this, it need to have a training data that is firstly passed to it, and then it will like train itself and change its weights accordingly. But then it need to have another uh, data, which is the validation, which is not like, that doesn't contain any data that is actually in the training. And this data will be used to validate the model and make sure that the model is not overfitting. And what is overfitting? This means that it, the model is just generalized. It's, it's not good at only guessing the data in the training model, but it could guess any data that it gets. So that's why the validation needs to contain uh, other data. So uh, you can do that manually. You can divide your files when you're like setting your data set. But honestly, there is a better way that you can do it just using the, uh, the, 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 the application. So maybe we'll just have a directory first. Maybe we can just have it. Uh, so our file will be called data. That's what I called my file. And you could just like have it data. That's the directory at the beginning. And then 
we will have an image uh, underscore data generator maybe and we call it this way so we have compared to other machines like we don't have like a huge number of data set i know like 10,000 might appear a good thing but still it's, it's less so how to increase our data set we could do something called data augmentation and data augmentation is mainly that we passing our images uh, to the uh, machine or to an image generator and then the image generator do some kind of variations according to our like according to our request and uh, maybe like zooming in flipping rotating and things like that so we could have various version of the same image like one rotated one going like this way one going that way so how do we do that we just use image gen data generator this one this is the library that we just imported up there and including in this one we will have uh, we could have the validation split over here. We here could mention that we want to split our file because since I told you I didn't adjust the file before, uh, the data file with like specific file for the training, specific file for the validation, we can just split it over here. Usually the training should be more than the validation. Uh, the best thing would be like having it either like 70, 20 and 70, uh, sorry, 80 and 20. That's like would be the ideal thing. So I'll just put the validation split as 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 means like 20% for the validation. And then after doing the validation, I'll just put it uh, down each other. We can do a rescale for the images. And basically the rescale is just uh, multiplying the colors of the images by the fraction, by a number between zero and one to just like reduce the size of the image and, and like make the machine uh, better and work like faster. Um, we could also do the validation, we could still do the validation. So we can have the rotation, for example, uh, the rotation, and this should be equal. It's just like rotation underscore range. So the rotation range, we could like place here any, any, any one that we want, like any uh, degree, I'll set it to just 40 degree. We could have a width uh, underscore shift and range. And here we could like just say to what percentage of the main thing do we want to shift the width. We could do it also 20%. And then we could have the same command just for the height. Other than the width, we'll just write height. We could also We could also have a zoom. We could have a zoom range as well, which is equals to maybe we could do it like also 20%. Uh, we could have a horizontal flip, a vertical flip, but like the horizontal here would be more convenient because we don't want like person flipping his head and like you don't want to detect someone who's like upside down. You just want to detect the person maybe if he's on the right side or on the left side. So that's why we don't use the, the vertical, we just use the horizontal. And it will be horizontal flip and then we will have a true. And then one last thing that we could add is fill mode. And fill mode basically, you know, when you're shifting or zooming, um, you might have like parts of the image is not there because you shifted the image. So we set the fill mode as whatever we want. If we set it, for example, as nearest, so this means it will like adjust the things that are removed, uh, the parts that are missing something with the, the nearest, uh, like the nearest color, the nearest pixel to what is hidden. So we could have like a more convenient picture. So now we have our data, our images, their validations have been stored in this image data generator. Now we just need to put these data into the training, into like an, a specific array for the training data and a specific array for the uh, validation. So maybe I can just like add it, uh, I will call it like a train generator. And in the train generator, we'll just take the image, that like the array that we just created, the image data gen. And then we will uh, use the function flow from, And uh, in this function, we will basically give it the directory that we want to take the images from. 
and we will give it the target size that we want our images to be and actually I just actually I just set it the, the data size before like editing it but we could we could add this one and we could remove it it's like up to you if you don't want to set the target size before uh, when you're preparing the data you can just put it here and I'll also just put it here just put it this way like target size is equals to 70 by you can yeah you can use any target size but here I chose to do 70 by 70 because it's really small and to be also processed faster uh, we have also the batch size and this one we just set it up there <laughs> we already have this uh, variable for the batch size which is a and then we need to give it as well the color mode and the color mode is just uh, telling it whether it's a gray scale or it's in uh, black and white or it's uh, an RGB. So here it's RGB. And then after the color mode, we will give it the class mode. And the class mode is just uh, whether it's if it's a, like a different classes, a different categories, but in our case, it's just the binary thing because you know it, we're just identifying whether the, the person is with or without. So it's just a binary class mode. And yeah, and maybe we could add a shuffle thing. And the shuffle means just you will be shuffling the images. Um, because like the like not each time that you input the training data, they are inputted in the same order. So like the machine don't like um, memorize it the way they are ordered or something. So maybe shuffling will add a more uh, variety to the training uh, thing. We could also have a seed, and the seed, this this is just a thing that enables, this is just a parameter that enables you to do the uh, shuffling as well. So yeah, and then we just give the name of the subset. So the subset is equals to, not subset, subset. The subset is equals to training, maybe we could call it this way. And yeah, that's it. We have the training generator. Then we need to have the validation. So rather than writing the whole code again, I'll just like copy paste this thing here and change it on. So rather than training, we would have valid, for example. And it will have the same thing. It will have the directory, the target size, the batch size, the color mode, the class mode, the shuffle. You could like you could remove the color mode, the class mode here since it's already defined up there. And you could have the shuffle, you could have the seed, but then this would be valid. So yeah, that's for the Now we have our images. Uh, they should have been like set. And yeah, you did the data, you did the variations. So basically I wrote a function because of course we don't have our data set over here because uh, it will take time. I wrote a function on the other thing that I prepared here. So when you run this thing, it will tell you like I found uh, 8,011 images belongs to two classes, which is with and without, and here as well is the 200, uh, 2002, because it's split at 80% and 20%, okay? And each has two classes. So this is actually the training and this is the validation. So yeah, I wrote a function over here that could show you like one batch of the generator thing. And yeah, that's basically the function. Uh, you just get the, the training generator, like one of the training generators batches, this is the next batch, like it gets the batch, and then you place it into you place it into an images array and a labels and array. Uh, the images will contain the images itself, and the labels will contain the zeros and the ones according to the with and without. We said with is zero and without is one. Uh, so yeah, and then we just draw a function. It's plot image, image array, and figure axis, and we will get the figure, plot them into a subplot with cell one and the batch size according, like we will split it in a good way, we will split it in 20 by 20 size, and then yeah, the axis should be flat, and this is just a way to like enhance the displaying thing, and then we will show the images here, and uh, have the axis off and everything, this is just like, as I told you to adjust like the way they are displayed, and then yeah, we will show and then afterwards, we just call the function, which is plot image, pass it the image array, and print the labels. And actually, this is what we have. So as you can see, those are eight, according to our batch size. And those are the labels. This is zero, this is zero, 
this is beer as well this is one because it's without one one and if you can see like the images some of them are this is flipped this is rotated a bit some are zoomed in some are zoomed out and yeah you can see maybe here i don't know if it's showing or not but like you can see this is the nearest fit thing that we did the fill mode sorry you can find like this is just added to the same color so yeah that's basically the preparation uh the preparation thing so we could now move on to the next part which is building the machine and this is actually doesn't require too much things as if it is called uh so yeah we could just start over here build the model and to build the model we first need a variable to store the model inside so i'll just call it the model and then inside it we will put the model type so the model type uh, there could be functional or sequential i will be using sequential and basically sequential is just uh, it just means that your file is uh, sorry that your model like each layer will be just passing to the next layer so the output will be taken from one layer to the other and then from the other layer to the other so it's like going into a sequence and inside the sequential function we will have an array and this array will contain all our layers <laughs> so yeah let's start so basically as i was just showing in the image we need to have first a function extract or like an extraction um an extraction layers and then a classification layers so for the extraction we use two layers mainly we have the convolutional layer and the image layer the convolutional layer it just extracts the features of each image like it takes like squares from each image and extract those features and then we have the other uh, layer that we need in the extraction which is the max pooling and the max pooling is just takes this matrix that the convolutional layer used to extract and then reduce reduce it so it could become a smaller size for the next uh, layers. Uh, this is just for a faster process of the machine. So we will have the first, we first have the convolutional 2D. So this has several uh, parameters. We first have the filters. The filters, this shows just the output filter that we want to have. Uh, most probably the filter is at the beginning, like at the opening layers or are the layers that are more near to the input they are small and then when you are nearer to the output the filter uh, the filter uh, nodes will be less uh, sorry will be more i'm sorry <laughs> so when it's more to the input it will be less when it's more to the output it will be more okay so a standard thing that people usually use either it should be like 32 or like 64, that's like the small things. It should go from 32, 64, 128, things like that. And yeah, you could, it could reach even to 255 and things like that. But as our model is just something you can just use, 32. We have then something called the kernel size. And the kernel size, the kernel size is just, uh, this is like a way to um, reduce the width and the height of the of the thing of the matrix that is extracted by the convolution in your network. So you could give it any. This depends mainly on the size of your images. Since our images is seventy by seventy, so we could use either one by one or three by three. And if it's more than one twenty eight, if it's like one twenty eight by twenty eight or more than that, we could use five by five. And this should be an odd number as well. So I'll just use three by three. And for the next one, we will use the sprites. So sorry, we will use the activation function. Uh, the activation and the activation function is mainly um, the function that will be used to activate the node when when like an action occurred. Okay. So in the early layers, we will use the relo, but then in the output layer, that's the only. Uh, Difference, we will either use a softmax or a, uh, um, a sigmoid because this will be like classifying them into classes. So here we'll just use relo. And then after this, we will have the padding. We will have the padding and yeah. So the padding is just a thing that could, uh, just a parameter that uh, we 
place it as same. So this keeps the the same volume of the of the inputted matrix or of the inputted like uh, dimensions of the same inputted size as the output size. So it's same like the spatula dimensions. Okay. So that's the padding, and then we will use just for the first layer. We could uh, do the input uh, shape because we know the input shape for the first layer. But then for the next layers, we don't need to do that. So we know it's seventy by seventy, and then it's and then it has three color chunk. Okay. So yeah, that's for the input shape. Um, and yeah, that's basically it for the convolutional network, for the convolutional layer. We, my model, uh, this is up to you as well. You could, according to the model, you could choose. Uh, my model will have three convolutional layers and each convolutional layer should be followed by max polling. So it will have other three max polling, just to downsample the sizes. And then we will have flatten and then two dense, okay? The flatten is just to make everything in one D vector and then the dense is just bound. Okay. So <clears throat> we have after the convolution, we should have the max polling to D. And then this would have only two parameters. Like the only thing that we need to add is just the pole underscore side, size, which should be equals, it's usually used two by two. Um, this is something that you could actually like change as you want. This just shows the maximum value of the polling window. So I'll just use two by two. And then uh, we have something called the stride and the strides for example. And the stride. The strides, this just shows how far the polling window moves from each polling step. Okay. So this is mostly used as two. Okay. So now we have our convolutional layer set and our max polling. So I will just copy paste the, the same thing for the other two convolution networks. But of course, we'll be removing the sizes because we don't know the size of the second one because there's a sampling over here. So we don't need actually to do that. And then we will need another convolutional network, but here we will change some stuff. Okay. So uh, for the convolutional uh, layers at the beginning, we just set it as well. It's uh, the filter we said at the beginning it should be less, and then when we do more. Uh, near to the output, we need to set it more. So here, I would just go higher by uh, by some steps, so it just be 64, okay? And then, of course, we need a max polling between the two convolutional layers, because we when we extract, we need to extract, and then down some, extract, down some, extract, and down some. So yes, here, just let me remove this. So now we have both of the networks. Uh, yeah. So that's it, we have three convolution and three max polling. So we then do the flatten layer, and the flatten layer is just um, a layer that will uh, will convert all these things in one D vector and pass it to the output. So it could be outputted more easily. Okay. Uh, this is like, this should be used. I mean, like the flatten is an important thing that you need to pass it first before passing to the output layer. So the dense is the one which is the output layer, basically. And yeah, uh, the output layer here in this model, you could have two dense layers. One of them will be like taking from the from the last layer. Uh, so its units should be like 64 or something. And then the last one will just have two nodes, one, uh, sorry, one node. If it's on, it's like, if it's zero or one, uh, with or without, you know? So here I will have one dense, uh, two dense, sorry, and the first one will be just 64. Uh, yeah, for the dense we have two parameters, the uh, units and the activation as well. So since this is still considered somehow a part of the hidden layer, it's still not the output one, so we will use value as well. And yeah, uh, here we use 64 as units, uh, because it's like taking it from here and still, as I told you, it's just still part of the hidden layer. So 
yeah, uh, that's basically the two parameters we need to add in the dance. And then the need another dance one. And this one basically is just the output one. So the units for this one will be one, uh, because it's just, you need just one node, one uh, node, either it's on off, with or without. Okay? You have just two categories. If you have more than that, you ju just need to change the units. And then, of course, you will change the activation function. So the activation function for the final layer, uh, I will use sigmoid. And yeah, sigmoid is just mainly a function used for binary things. So if you have like just two things to classify, we use sigmoid. And if you have more than that, if you have different categories, if you're like doing the numbers, you will use softmax. Because softmax is used for those uh, more things. Anyhow, that's basically it for the sequence. We could have model of summary, and this will just show us. Summary of the model as well. I will just show you the summary over here. So I did exactly the same thing that I did there. So this is the uh, summary. We have a convolutional coding. That's all the layers with all the parameters and everything. Yeah, that's it. so. We built our model. <laughs> we just need to start training it. Uh, yeah. So before training the model, we just need to do a small thing, which is compiling the model. And compiling the model will go as follows. We will use a function called compile, and of course, here. So in the compile, we set uh, the mat the, like before training it, we just set the matrices that we want to keep track of the parameters that we want to keep track of while we're training the data. So we need to keep track of the loss, of the, of the accuracy, and also we set its learning rate. So we use the optimizer that we were just importing up there. <laughs> so we will just write optimizer and then we will write the function, the optimizer that we want to use, create a new instance of it, and our uh, optimizer is add-ins. There are several types. You can use um, RMS prop, you could use uh, AD Delta, but, but for this one, I chose Adam. And yeah, Adam would work very well. You can try them if like if you want to try them and yeah, see which is better for your model. So the learning, we just set the learning rate. I will set here the learning rate to 0 0.001. And yes, after doing the optimizer, we will say that we want to have the loss as well tracked when we're training the model and we will use for this the binary cross copy and binary. so it's just the binary cross okay, I'm so bad at this kind of thing <laughs> so you might find some story mistakes uh, yeah so yeah, that's that's the last thing. It's just we would use the binary. We could use also categorical cross to feed, and this could be used if we have different categories. But here we just have two things, so we just use the binary. And then matrices. This parameter just includes uh, the things that we need to keep track of. So I will just keep track of the accuracy. Okay. And yeah, that's that's basically it for the compile. We now have compiled our model, supposedly. <laughs> the compile actually doesn't show anything. It just like runs as it is. And yeah, we could start now training the model. And as it might sound a big word, it's just a one sentence. So training the model is literally one sentence. So first we will use to train the model the fit function. And we just need to pass it train generator, like the training data, which we call, I think here, train generator. Let's pick it this way. Okay, and then we need to pass it the epochs, which is, we call, I think, epoch. I don't want to just use epoch, that syntax. And then we need to pass it as well the validation. Uh, so it's called uh, the value data which is equals to whatever we called it out there we called it this so let's put it this way and then the batch size 
and the batch size is just the batch size that we like the variable we just identified up there as well. Uh, yes, here. Yes, that's basically it. And for us to be able to plot this model, like or the values of this model, we just need to store like the accuracy and the losses and everything in a good matrix. So I'll just name it as history and then it will pass it. So we'll store everything. Of course, training the model takes some time. It takes not like much for this model, honestly. It might take like maybe 15 minutes, but that's why I just did it before as well. And I'm going to take one second. Yeah, here it is. That's how it appears. As you can see. We have epoch one. This is the images. This is the time for each epoch, 20 seconds. And then you have the loss and the accuracy. You have the, va uh, the validation loss and the validation after. So this is the training and this is the validation. And yeah, you can see at the beginning, it's, it's the loss is really high and the accuracy is really low. But then when you go to the end, you have 30 epochs. If you go to the, like, the 30th, you'll find the loss is 0.07, which is, could be enhanced more, but like, I mean, it's a very good one. And then we have the accuracy, 97%. And the most important thing that the validation accuracy as well is high. It's not low. Because like we don't want our model to be overfitting. So yes, that's it for the training. As you can see, that's it. We have a very good uh, accuracy. Uh, we have a 97.58%. So that's a very good accuracy. So after doing that, we now have the history stored. We could just plot one of the things. We could either plot the loss accuracy or both. It's up to us. So just plot it so plotting it we will require an array that stores the loss of the training data I will just call it loss and then a loss train and then I will have the history and the history dot the history this is the name of my model and then the function is called history as well <laughs> it would be a bit confusing uh, different people, and yeah, we will add sorry, we will just name it. We want the loss, and then we will have the exact same settings. I just copy paste, and then rather than the train, it will be validation, for example. I'll just call it val, and this will have rather than that, it's val, val underscore loss. Yeah, uh, so yeah, that's basically it. And then we could have another array with the epochs because we are going to plot it x and y and on the x-axis it will be the epochs. So we we'll just have an array of epochs, of the epochs number. Uh, we could have an epoch plot, for example. I don't know, we could name it anything. And we'll have a range. Right? And it could go from 1 to the epoch. I think I'm talking about this. So it will be epoch plus 1. Uh, okay. Yes. That's basically it. And then we we'll just plot. Plot. And you know, of course, the plot function is just showing the uh, x axis and the y axis. So we need just to plot the epoch plot and the loss train. We need to plot two diagrams now uh, one for the loss train uh, with respect to the epochs, and this could, we could use the green color, for example. Then label, we could say it's whatever training loss. And then we'll have the exact same statement. But rather than the loss train, we'll use the loss y. We need to plot as well the validation loss. Maybe we could have a blue or something. And then rather than the training, this will be value. And yeah, we could just like add titles or anything. We can make it like as fancy as we want. This is just easy. Right, title. Let me just add it this way and add like maybe yes. Yes. And yeah, we could like we could add labels for the x-axis, labels for the y-axis. And then we just, oh, sorry, I'm working in different ways. Uh, and we could just 
lot after we finish like adding everything we just plot the show you could add x-axis you could add y-axis labels that's up to us so since as well <laughs> we don't have the model over here i show you the output over here i just here added extra x-axis labels and y-axis labels and some legends um so yeah that's basically it so this is the loss one um and of course like it, it's it's just like you know, something that we should all know if the loss is like nearer to zero so that's better if it's uh, the the further it is from zero that's the worst so the more it's near to, to zero it's better so yeah we can see like both of them are uh, almost equals to zero and also, also the most important thing that we need both of them to have almost the same loss so that's as well shows us that there is no problem with our model uh, and you can see like most of them like both of them are almost the same we could also plot the accuracy with the same code that we did like it will be exactly the same code but just without the loss we could just add validation and here uh, sorry accuracy like maybe you can name this accuracy and this accuracy and you just say it's accuracy and then val accuracy and yeah we just like name things differently but then it's exactly the same thing i just did it here to save some time so yeah that's the output that i got and as you can see the accuracy is really high <laughs> and both of them are almost the same so that's a good thing um that's a very nice thing of course uh, because uh, since they are near, so we don't have any other for them. So yeah, that's basically it. We just need one last thing, which is testing our model. <laughs> the moment of truth. So testing our model could be done using various ways. I will just go through like the most easy way we can do it now. And it's like really fast. So we just create another code block. So the code block, okay, so let's start here. We could have several images. I will be trying them on 16 images, okay, because that's what I have prepared. And of course, the images that you will be trying it on, they shouldn't be labeled, like they shouldn't be in specific uh, files with maybe a file with, with and file without. You just like have to put them randomly together. And also the same, those images shouldn't be in the training or the validation sets. Those should be like new, brand new images make sure that your model could actually predict them. So I will put um, a for loop that will just loop in range and it will just uh, loop for maybe, for example, from one to 17, something's not included, yeah, inside it. And inside it, we could uh, put the image, we will just get the image from the directory. I've named my images uh, from 1 to, to 16, so make it easier here as well to extract it. So I will just get it from the directory. So the name will be like each time it will be i.jpg, sorry, 1.jpg, 2.jpg, 3.jpg. So yeah, it will be i.jpg. So I'll just take the i, which is the full thing, and then plus. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so yeah, now now we got the image from the directory. We need to load the image, so we will call the same thing, which is this thing. Uh, no, we will create a new one, which is called maybe image, anything like image data, for example. And the image data, we will have the image. We create an instance of the image, and then we will click dot load. And basically, load image just shows uh, loads the image to the to the to the program, and we will have just pass it the image directly direct, and then we will pass it maybe the size that we want it or the target size. We will just do it the seven by seventy because when we're passing it to our model in the next step, it will be ready, okay. and then we loaded the image. So to pass the image to the to the model, we just need it first to be in an array, so in a NumPy array. So we will just put it in a NumPy array, data, which is equals to image dot uh, load image, uh, not load image, load image to array. And yeah, image to array. This is just converting the image to an array, a NumPy array. Uh, 
Yeah, and one important thing, I think I forgot to import the NumPy. And this is fine because we didn't use it in the entire thing. We can go in right now and import the NumPy. So yeah, we can just import it here. Import. Yeah, that's the image to array, and then we will be having image underscore data as well. And we need also to expand it in a way uh, and like convert the array. Uh, like we need to insert a new axis that will include the output of the machine after, like the machine, uh, like the, the, the output thing. So we will use the function expand dimension. Uh, we use the numpy for this and then expand dimensions and then we just pass it the image data and then we need to pass it the axis so this means like we want to place a new uh, a new axis at this position which is here okay this will contain that and yeah that's it we just pass it to our model using the predict thing we just say model dot Predict, and we pass this thing to the model, which is the image underscore data, and yeah, it gets store the output back and classify variable. This would just get us the output of the model of the prediction, like the prediction thing, and this is actually an array uh, that will have several things, and we just need prediction like the zero or the one. And according to that, we can display something. So maybe we could have like an if statement or something that will um, just be used to write them. So we'll just have an if statement that will take the classify the zero, zero position, because that's the position that contains the guess. And if it's equal equals to zero, so you know this means that it's uh, with a uh, with mask. We just like maybe print the person is wearing mask or anything or mask. <clears throat> but yeah, make sure also of something to do. Just make sure because this classification is not an integer. We just need to pass it as an integer. Sorry, convert it to an integer. And yeah, else. We could just say print the person is not wearing the mask. We could like make this uh, even more fancy if we want. We could like maybe uh, uh, we could maybe add some colors for the text. We could have, for example, green for like wearing and red for not wearing. And maybe we could display the image or anything. So yes, we could. I could just show you how to display the image, and then I will show you the final output. So if you want to display the image that you got, you just use the display function. But for this function to work, you need to import a library. Uh, it's just the import the library of the image and display. So I just import it as best as I can. It's from iPython dot display dot no dot so then for the image and the display yes now we have it and yeah uh, we could just here type display image and then after displaying the image we will just pass it the directory here and then the size that we want maybe we could say like the width is equals to whatever we could like display the node 50 50 and too high yeah but take care of something since I have already said uh, the images are 70 by 70 so they could appear more blur when we display it as 150 but yeah it, it's just for us to see how the images looks like and yeah, that's it. This should display the image, and then under it is either it's a wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. 
So this is the exact same thing for the other model. And yeah, I'm gonna show you how it looks like. I can run this again. Yeah. Yeah, here I just added an extra thing that it will display the green uh, if the person is wearing a mask and it will display red if the person is not wearing it. And this is just easy. You can just get the code of the green and the red and you place it right here, plus and then when you're typing it here. And yeah, that's the output. <laughs> you can see it could, yeah, it identified this well because the person is not wearing the mask properly here. Yeah, not wearing here because he's not wearing properly as well. He's, his nose is outside. <laughs> here, yeah, he's wearing it properly. Here he's wearing it properly. Yes, 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 that's me. Yes. Uh, and yeah, here he's not wearing because my nose was a bit not like the thing was not all over my nose. So says I'm not wearing. Uh, we're going now to celebrities. <laughs> and they're all not wearing. Here it detected that I'm not wearing, even though I'm wearing, so that's fine because like you know the accuracy is point seven percent. So maybe this one just slipped. And yeah, this one is not wearing as well because my nose is not there. Uh, and this one I'm wearing <laughs> because my nose is, is fine. And yeah, that's basically it. It should like when you put any image, it should be fine and it should detect it. Maybe sometimes it might slip like it happened here. But yeah, it's fine. Just one image among like 17 images. So that's really a good accuracy. And yeah, that's basically it. You can even enhance this further. Maybe you can use your machine learning and like maybe get like the images rather than having an, an images that are actually there you can maybe implement it using a real life camera or something a real time camera that just like detect the person and say that this is not wearing this wearing and yeah but this is basically like the simple way to do it and yeah we hope you enjoyed our uh, workshop uh, and we hope that you have learned something new you could implement it and be proud of what you've learned and yeah, if you would like to know more about um, about the assembly, just don't forget to follow us on our Instagram pages or on our social media pages. And you can go to our phones so you could learn more about the next workshops, the upcoming workshops. And you could even subscribe to our uh, YouTube page uh, for more interesting workshops coming ahead. Thank you. This is Nadine. Thank you for attending today's workshop with me.